Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosso. This is my tech channel where I upload uh, stuff to do with technology. Recently, a lot of videos about optical media. Today, we're going to be doing one for Linux folks, and that is how you can use a virtual machine on your host computer running. Uh, I'm using Ubuntu, but you might be using some different distro. And you can use a Windows VM for burning optical media. Uh, the reason you might want to do this really is that the burning software on Linux is a little bit outdated. I'm talking, yes, about K3B, Brazero, and FXC Burn. I saw Nero kind of had a Linux product for a while, then they discontinued it. But I think it's fair to say that the burning software on Windows is more reliable, especially when you're burning stuff like Blu-rays and BDXL discs, particularly you know, when if you're using, let's say, the M disk on the BDXL at $10 a pop for a disk, about approximately, uh, it's kind of annoying when K3B just doesn't burn your disk and you generate a sort of relatively expensive table coaster. So what I'm doing now is I'm logging into my uh, to my VM. And uh, once that is done, I'm going to go ahead and connect my Pioneer Blu-ray device with a DVD loaded in it. And I'm just going to be burning today a pretty quick um few C panels for my web hosting. This is one of the kind of last bits and pieces for my archival stuff in 2023. So I'll just pause the video while this gets through and gets me onto my desktop. And then I'll go ahead and connect to the VM with my uh with my Blu-ray driver. Okay, here we go. So we've booted nicely, wonderful. And I'm gonna go ahead now and just connect my Pioneer Blu-ray drive to the USB 3. There we go, that's been done. And this will take a couple of seconds too. Now what's gonna happen is it's going to detect first in your host operating system, in this case on Ubuntu. So we'll probably get a pop-up. Uh, K3B will probably spring into, there we go. K3B automatically launches for me whenever I have, uh, whenever I connect my Pioneer thing. So what you want to do now is you want to disconnect your um, burner from the host and connect it to the guest. So going into virtual machine on the top, Next, go into removable devices, and you should see your um, your burner here. Now, if you have an internal burner, I'm not sure exactly how this would work because I haven't bought one yet, but I have bought one in an enclosure, and it detects as a USB device as well. Uh, for for one that's really internal to your computer, I guess it should show up uh, in, the, in the hardware here. So Pioneer Blu-ray device, I'm going to go connect, disconnect from host. And this will disconnect the Blu-ray and connect it straight into the VM. And just in a second, you should get a message popping up here on Windows saying, you see, the Blu-ray is being detected, so that's wonderful. Now, what I'm doing, as I said, I'm burning a few cPanel backups today. So I thought this, this is a relatively quick job to show on this uh, on this, uh, on this demo. So something that I think is quite cool is that in a VMware Workstation Player, you can create shared folders between your host and guest. And I can actually burn directly from the files on the guest. So you can see I've got my tar.gz files here ready to burn. And I before copied these onto my desktop of the VM and then burned that way. But I actually discovered that that's not necessary and I haven't had trouble directly burning uh, from files that are shared this way with the VM. So really from here, it's pretty plain sailing. But just to show you guys that it does work, I'm going to go into Burnware Premium and queue these up to burn on a DVD. Okay, so you can see by, by default, the Burnware, whatever burn, burning software you're using is going to connect, is going to detect the presence of the virtual CD drive on your VM. You can actually set that, that it automatically doesn't mount when the VM boots. So that's uh, that's labeled here as volume D. And the actual real uh, optical media drive is volume E. So I'm just going to click into that. And now we've swapped over and it seems to know that there is a DVD there. So I'm just going to call this uh, C panel backup 0124. And then I'll just put in my files to be burned. Okay, so as you can see, I'm able to literally just drop the stuff directly from the shared folder. I'm only using about half the disk. Um, but let's, uh, so that works nicely. So you can just, so you don't even need to duplicate space by copying stuff onto the VM. Uh, you can just uh, give it shared access to a folder on the Linux host machine. Then I'm going to click on burn. And from here, it's pretty much plain sailing. It's only a two and a half gig uh, disk. And this is now I can hear my Blu-ray burner spinning up to life. So it's pretty cool that you are able to, you know, directly control the hardware uh, through a VM on a Linux host. While this is burning, you can see that I didn't really do anything uh, very fancy. I left actually half the 
the DVD unfilled. But uh, just to point out that there is DVD Disaster, which we talked about for Ubuntu. And I assumed it was, it looked like a Linux only tool from the way it was described on the internet. Uh, but it's actually not. It's also available for um, for Windows as a download. And this is, if I had been putting a bit more effort into this, um, I would have added some, uh, some ECC error correction code data just as they had the space to spare. And it works just as the, um, just as it does in Linux. Well, it can't uh, connect to my, the Pioneer drive currently because it's being uh, occupied by Burnaware. Uh, but if I'd wanted to create some data before, it would have been the same process, create an ISO image of what I'm burning. Um, we have the same options for error correction. I recommended, my personal favorite is uh, the RSO3 algorithm. Um, and if, you know, it's, it fills the disk up with some, uh, some ECC code. And then I could have just burned that directly from, uh, from Burnaware by telling it to burn an image with the ECC code on that image. Okay. So I had a so the burning process here in uh Burnaware premium is just about finished. We're coming up to the capacity in just a second now. And as you can see, I want to just show you guys that this really works. Um, we have finished the disk. We're closing the track and I'm just going to wait for this to, uh, to pop out of the machine in a second. Then I will close down the VM and see if we can read our newly created disk in uh, Ubuntu, which we should have no problems with, but let's just see that this all worked perfectly. Okay, so we got the message that um, it was the burn process was completed successfully, and I'm going to go ahead now and I go into Linux. Okay, so I'm back in Ubuntu. I'll just put the hood down on the Pioneer drive, and in a few seconds we should hopefully see it appear uh, automatically mounted into our system as Blu-ray Media, and we should see that the uh, tar.gz cpanel files which we added uh, are on the disk in 321 there we go cpanel backup and as you can see um, the media burned just fine all the uh, all the cpanels made it as expected and there you go guys you can uh, burn optical media including blu-ray on uh, on ubuntu using a windows vm and in fact if you're thinking about using any of the more advanced disks the 100 gig or the 128 gig i personally would tend to recommend this because I just run into too many errors in K3B with Blu-ray specifically. So this would actually be something I definitely recommend doing. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. Until the next time.